Hi, this is James Governor from Redmonk, aka Monk Chips. I'm here at the SAP TechEd 09 conference in Vienna, and I'm joined by Timo Elliott from Business uh, Well, is it SAP or is it Business SAP Objects? Business Objects. SAP Business Objects. So uh, I, I think one of the, the very interesting things about Timo is just how long you've been at this party. You were number... I was the eighth employee of Business Objects uh, 18 years ago. Wow. So one of the things that I think is interesting, um, to me at least, in, in seeing this, this transition, I mean, one company buys another, um, in any merger and acquisition uh, activity, there, there's going to be a change of culture. But I think this one is very, very clear um, and very impactful uh, on the traditional SAP business. So what do you think that, that business objects has brought to the culture? And, and in fact, from a technology perspective as well, how does this change SAP story and portfolio? Okay, so it's, it's hard for me to tell from the inside, um, but certainly business objects has always had a very open culture. Uh, we realize that people have lots of different information systems, and our job has always been to access that information from everywhere and analyze it. And we've always been very focused on the business user. So obviously, like other technology companies, we talk to technology buyers, but we've always had a strong focus on interfaces for business people. So I think there's, the, the, I mean, this kind of gets to the heart of it then. If we, we've got one single really big change in terms of SAP um, and, and the acquisition of where it goes from here is really nailing this unstructured space. Is, is that, I, I, am I right in understanding that, or semi-structured? I'd say slightly different. Um, so SAP, the success of SAP has always, always been about robust uh, process mm -hmm. and efficiency. Um, but you, there's efficiency and then there's being effective. And I think the next generation of SAP success, and this is hopefully where business objects uh, tools can help, is that effectiveness notion. No, it, it's the no, 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 it's just I've got to say the, 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 the tagline of this event was maximize your footprint. And as someone that believes in sustainability, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't help but see that as a bit counterintuitive, you know. Um, but, but clearly, if you maximize your business effectiveness, possibly you lower your carbon footprint. Yes. So, absolutely. But it, but it, it just. It, it that was an interesting choice of track line. <laughs> so, so, we'd be very good at uh, structured processes. So, with the unstructured part in, not so much unstructured data, I think that's important, but it's unstructured process. So the things that the average business person does each day are not beautifully structured uh, you know, ERP processes that you can draw neatly with a BPM tool today. They're things like a company acquisition, a company mm -hmm. merger. These are, these are things that they have a certain amount of structure. Oh, they're inherently messy. But they're inherently messy. But you know what you need to do. There, there's definitely a guiding workflow, but it's nothing like you'd see in a traditional SAP system. It's a lot more info, information centric, it's a lot more people centric, and so we need to have the next generation platform to support that. So it will be a lot more centered around the tools like the social network analyzer. I was going to say, we're in danger of sort of having a theme, and almost as if we were leading up to something here. But well, amazingly enough, right. yes, there is actually a method behind the madness. Okay, and so what, what social network analyzer? So social network analyzer. And you can talk about it in this context of M&A, because that's... Absolutely, yes. So you can bring in, uh, so social network analyzer is a single view of relationships. So we've talked a lot about collaboration mm -hmm. in the last year or so. We all know that collaboration is going to be a huge part of the enterprise future. But how do you figure out who to collaborate with? Twitter. Is one example, right? But there's, you know, there's my, there's the managing relationships that are stored in my HR system. There's which customers I work with in my CRM system. There's probably cross somewhere in an Excel spreadsheet. There's all of the cross-functional teams. Mm -hmm. It might be an email distribution list. These all create relationships between people, and what we'd like to do is bring those together. So we have a central um, server including uh, data integration, so all the things we're good at from a BI point of view. Bring all that information in one place. And then as an example of how you might use that information, we have a front end we call the social network analyzer that gives you very easy uh, view of all of the people in your organization. And then you can start exploring the relationships. So, you know, you know what, you know what, en enough talk. <laughs> I think what we need to do is, is to look at this so Timo, thanks very much. Thank Let's you. look at this product now, All right. uh, because uh, yeah, it's something different from SAP.
Okay, so just a very short demo because you can go and try this yourself at sna-demo.ondemand.com. I do like your catchy URL, Steven. <laughs> and we provided some uh, sample corporate data, so just hit the login button, and you are uh, in Cox in this demo. And this example brings together information from multiple different systems. On the left-hand side here, we have the faceted navigation that gives us a breakdown of uh, information about the, uh, the employees of the company. If I want to select a particular group of people, those in Palo Alto, I can simply double-click. And let's say I'm interested in the people working on a particular project. In this case, it's called Titan. So I can just use the, the search bar to even further narrow down the list of people. So um, Dan Wang, for example, might be the sort of person that I'd like to collaborate with, and here I have lots of information about him. I can click to access his email and so on. But so far, it's not necessarily that interesting. But here's where we get to the interesting part. If we click on Explore, we can start seeing what Dan's relationships are within the organization. So here, this is the big business contacts of Dan. We could change that view to, for example, the traditional HR reporting hierarchy. So Dan works for Mark. If I click on Mark, you can see the view changes, but also the different list of re relations changes. So we can find out that Dan is, sorry, Mark is a member of, in this case, a project board. So a group of people around a particular project. So what is all this stuff built in? So this is, uh, the front end is uh, Flex. And uh, the, the, this is a front end that uses uh, a REST uh, API. So this is an example of a front end. We have another one that works on, uh, on the iPhone. And then there's a back end, which is a, uh, it has a database with a data structure for bringing all the information together. And there's a very separate admin console. You know, it's a product for grown-ups. It, it supports all of the security, single sign-on, data integration. Uh, so how do I relate to, uh, to Mark? So I can do the sort of six degrees of uh, separation type of idea. So you know, how do I know this person? I'm Nick Cox. These are all the different ways I am related to Mark. And if I hover over here, we can see reports to there's a business contact of. And so it's OK, this is the person that I'd like to collaborate with. So I can add them to the clipboard. I can now send them an email, invite them to Google Wave, or to Jive, or Wiki, uh, or export that to another system and do something else with it. Great. There you go. That was a quick overview. Don't hesitate to go and, uh, and try it yourself and give us feedback. And we will be looking to incorporate this functionality in a product. But it's a prototype. Um, there's no, uh, no guarantees on what we're going to do with it. The more feedback we get, the better it will be. Thank you, Timo. Thank you.